I'm bringing the aquarium in. As you can see, it's matching to the stand. Set it so that it's fully supported by the stand. This particular frame has a little bit of extra, what appears to be extra, but it's just basically flashing. You need to make sure that the bottom, which you can feel on this aquarium, is sitting very, very level to the unit. It must be supported all the way around to make sure that everything stands there. This is a prepared stand. As you can see, there's a door here. Just open the door and you can see that it's an empty space suitable for placing things such as uh, filters and various other assorted accessories in the actual cabinet. Getting the tank now. This aquarium is matched to the stand as it always should be. There's a little bit of flashing on here that uh, the frame overlaps but you can feel by the way it's been set up that there's the, the base of the aquarium sits right against the edges of the unit. This goes out a little bit over. It's for design purposes on the frame. It's a, a flat bottom tank. does not have a floating bottom, but will do uh, perfectly for the unit. I'm going to take off the cover so that we can access the aquarium. As you can see, there is no frame here. The uh, canopy itself is providing the frame. Now that the aquarium is in its place and we see that it's located correctly, the next step is to put in gravel. Okay, we're going to uh, show you the next steps. We'll be washing and rinsing the gravel so that it's clean and pure without any kind of uh, impurities, uh, grit, transport grit, tra transport dust, other impurities that happen during shipment or during manufacture. The gravel that I'm going to be using is a, almost a pebble style with epoxy coating um, to make sure that it's inert when we start off with the aquarium. So the next step will be moving to the um, kitchen so that I can show you how to do gravel washing. As you can see, I'm all set up here. I have the gravel sitting right close to the area that I'm going to be cleaning in it. Uh, I talk about strainers and things like that. That's uh, what I'm going to use as actually a steamer um, that I'm going to put over the sink, the uh, drain in the sink, so that if there's any gravel that gets away, it's going to be trapped and I can discard it into a regular um, wastebasket or use it, reuse it in the, in the aquarium. In addition, here's my bucket. The bucket's sitting there waiting for um, after I've cleaned all the gravel uh, in the colander and then uh, just going to dump it all in there. Once I'm done with it, I'll use the bucket to carry it over. Now this bucket has been rinsed. It's never seen uh, any kind of detergent or any other kind of soap so that uh, it's going to be safe for the fish. I'm going to be rinsing, not only am I going to be rinsing the gravel, but behind the gravel you're going to see there's a few there's a few rocks and things that I'm going to also rinse at the same time put it on top of the gravel. Um, then I'm going to use the bucket to transport the uh, gravel uh, to the aquarium and we'll get back to the aquarium rather momentarily. Anyway, first off we'll do the, the rinsing of the gravel. So, now you can see I have the colander here. I have one bag Left unopened, I've taken the liberty of opening the, for the other five bags. What I'm going to have be putting in here is about 25, gallon, 25 pounds of, of gravel. Uh, basically, is in, for speed and to work with this, all I'm going to do here is open the top so that it pours easily. I have my colander and I start the, and I start the, start the, the water. If you notice, what I've done is I've taken the, taken the steamer okay which is a has a lot of little holes in it I turn it upside down and I've put it over the drain okay, it fits very very nicely over the drain and works perfectly for what I'm gonna do now I take over the over the sink 
I pour the first bit of gravel in. What's nice about this particular amount of gravel is that it fits in the colander. And start with a cool water. Okay, I suggest you roll up your sleeves when you're doing this, but uh, that's really your choice. So, what I do is I take it and I stir it around to make sure that the water comes through. I can hear the gravel hitting the, hitting the sink just a little bit. So, I'll move this over just a little bit so you can see it going through. Basically, we're just rinsing the gravel, letting the, letting the excess go through. You can see that there's a lot of different, different sizes and things like that. Once I'm done with the rinse, into the, into the thing. As I said, I cut, the, I cut the tops off for the sake of speed. And who wants to get the scissors wet anyway? So we open up, get every piece of gravel, stir it around, allow it to go. Rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. Basically, you're looking to get rid of as much of the grit, transport dirt, all the things that happen in a, in a, in a bag of gravel, anything that got through the screen that's, that's too small, you want to get it out of the, out of the tank. That's two. Once again, get your hands in it, stir it around, try to make as little of it go over the, over the top as possible. You will get it in the, in the sink, that's why the, that's why the steamer is there, so that when the water drains out, there will be no problem. We're halfway through. It doesn't take a long time, but it will take a lot of effort. It will save a lot of grief in the long run, especially if this if this gravel was not particularly well rinsed or uh, properly properly manufactured or purchased bulk uh, for some other thing. Red Flint gravel is something that used to be very very popular uh, where I came from um, quite a while ago. They used it in drilling and stuff like that, but they. Uh, but it was a good, it was a good natural gravel when good natural gravels weren't really all that available. Um, but it was dirty, and instead of doing it this way, you're going to have to work in the bucket and allow the water to water to flow through, flow clean. Unfortunately, my bucket's just a little bit too tall. But basically, all you do is you run it into a run it into a a bucket, let the water overflow over the side. That's where the where the uh, strainer is so important on the on the sink to keep all the stuff that's going to come over, and you'll see it until it runs clear. You just keep working it. Basically, two more bags left. It's important. This is this is this is a major fundamental step. If you don't do it, you're going to pay for it in extra filter media. Her purchases it because all the dirt and the grime is going to get up in the up in the water. The filter is going to pick it up, and as it picks it up, it's going to get filled, clogged, and otherwise uh, become useless. So you're going to end up paying for extra filter for this. What is it? Ten minute operation for 25 gallons worth of 25 pounds worth of gravel. 30 pounds worth of gravel. I'm planning on putting plants in this tank. Okay, if it was a pure uh, aquarium that had nothing um, other than just static polyresin ornaments or uh, rocks or stuff like that, then I probably wouldn't put as much in there. But I never know. Sometimes I may decide to change this over to one of my more favorite types of, uh, of fish, the African cichlids, the langatas, zebras, things like that just to, to let them go. And if I do that, those guys are diggers. And you need a little bit of, you need a little bit of gravel there to make sure that they don't hit the bottom too fast. There we go, we've done it. Didn't take long to do 25 gallons worth of, 25 pounds worth of uh, gravel. Turn this off, let it all settle down, and there we go. 
So, as you can see, there's a fair bit of gravel, stuff like that. This is stuff that you do not want to put into the tank. Or you don't want to put it in the tank, and you don't want to put it down the drain. So the best thing to do is wipe it over, get it out of the way, pick it up with a paper towel, and discard it. You never want to be blamed for, for destroying the kitchen sink while you're doing your jobs. Remember, you have to make sure that you don't put grit down in any time. Okay, that includes carbon, that includes a lot of different substances. So just make sure that you clean up after yourself. Now I'm putting this back in here. I really don't need it because what I'm going to be doing here is basically just rinsing rocks. Okay, I don't want to I don't want to scrub, I never use soap. All I'm doing is hand washing the rocks so that they're as clean as possible. These are, gonna, these are designed to be making uh, terraces and stuff like that when I'm decorating the tank or putting the gravel. It's really for the next step when I work on it. So I'm getting off any transport, dirt, grime, and all that kind of stuff, making sure that uh, I don't transport that into the aquarium. There you go. Just a few of them. As you can see, they change colors when they're wet. So there'll be a few extra little colors. Okay. I have a trough aquarium that I uh, basically stole this last piece of rock from. This is zebra rock, one of my more favorite stuff. It's very, very colorful in the aquarium. The, the water brings out the blacks and the whites. Makes a nice, a nice little contrast. I'm going to use this somewhere as a as a as a central a central rock in the decorations. 